couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle improvisation lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite methods of noodling around and improvising on guitar, which I call, just for the purposes of this lesson, ultra funky piano style improvisation uh, or soloing. Um, the name doesn't matter, the style is what matters. And what do I mean by ultra funky piano style licks? I mean that if you wanna play something funky on a piano, you'd usually pick a very simple and rhythmic uh, bass line, very simple and rhythmic, and you'd improvise in a funky manner, meaning you'd usually play pentatonic licks or minor licks, um, which are very short, very sweet, and also very rhythmical. So we're gonna translate it um, into guitar by taking the C sharp minor chord, and I'm using the C-sharp minor chord because in C-sharp minor I can have the open A bass string and I also have okay, 4 and 7 on the 6th string for G-sharp and B. And um, that's going to come in handy as our bass notes. So, okay, 4 and 0 on the A string and 4 and 7 on the 6th string. Um, I'm not showing you an example yet because the example might seem a little bit uh, complicated while this method is nothing but simple. It's not complicated at all, it just looks like it. So the C-sharp minor chord, um, if we want the C-sharp minor scale on it, then we have Okay, we have seven, five, four on the E string, the same on the B string, and then we have okay, six and four on the third string, okay, seven, six, and four on the fourth, and the same thing on the fifth. So on the sixth string we have okay, what we have on the E string, which is seven, five, and four. Okay. But we're gonna use uh, four and seven, and for A, instead of five on the sixth string, we'll play the open A string because it's more comfortable that way and enables us to move to nine if we like to go there. Okay, to create a slide or sort of uh, an embellishment. I'm just giving you the tools for now. I think you can trust me. We're gonna have enough examples in a moment. So let's get to know the scale again. And I want you to notice how you can visualize the chord all the way. You can visualize the chord all the time. You have four, okay, on all the strings. Okay, and you have four, six, seven on the fifth. You have, okay, four and six on the fourth. You also have seven, but this is the chord note. So, okay, you have four and the chord note on each string. Okay, so immediately you can uh, memorize that you have okay, 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 5 on strings, 4, 3, and 2. Okay, immediately, okay, instant um, plethora of options there. Okay, um, you can arpeggiate, you can uh, play around with it, you can double stop, okay, even... Okay. You can slide it. Um, so I want you to visualize it first. And, okay, and here you have four six only on the third string and then on the second string, as we said, four five, just add seven and the same thing on the E string. Okay? Now, of course you have okay, this arpeggio of the, the chord. So I want you to visualize it too. Okay, six, five, four, and strings three, two, one, or so you can do, or okay, or or okay. You can use the chord for soloing and paint the scale around it. Instead of having to think about the scale all the time, just think about the chord. It'll make it much simpler. 
Now, what about the bass notes? The bass notes are the issue here. You have to insert the bass notes whenever you can. And what do I mean by that? Just try to hint at the bass note you want at least once every lick. Um, for example. See? Just playing around with four and six on strings three and four. And whenever possible, whenever I'm not playing the lick, I play a bass note or two. Sometimes three, okay, depending on how I feel it at the moment. So, okay, that's what I mean by piano style funky, um, funky improvisation. And we're just getting started. Okay, I don't want to get carried away too too far. I already played the A bass string by mistake. I wanted to stay on the C sharp. And the idea here is to not think about the bass note. It's supposed to be automatic. Every time you finish a lick, play a bass note. That's the idea. Um, and that way, with enough practice, and it doesn't take too much practice, trust me, um, in order to achieve it, it sounds as if you're playing okay? Instead of two hands, you just have a bass note every now and then, and it sounds a little bit like uh, imitating a piano. So again, let's start with strings three and four. was C sharp and then when I wanted to uh, break the pattern I played A and then instead of C sharp I played B right seven on the sixth string and then back to C sharp it's the most basic bass move okay A B C sharp okay but instead of playing the B here we can play it on seven on the sixth string if that's too much of a stretch for you to use the pinky for a bass note Play two on the fifth string, but then you'd have to... That's actually a pretty good idea. You can play the, the notes around the B chord and then slide to go back to the C sharp posi uh, position. But in my opinion, that's a little bit too early for that. So just keep in mind that you can do it. Now, as usual with examples, uh, with creative examples, um, it's a little bit tricky for me to do it because um, teacher mode is one side of the brain and the creative improvisation mode is the other side of the brain, the creative side uh, versus the analytical side. So I'm gonna try to get into it. If I make some mistakes, then I'll just edit it out and try again. So let me, let me try to give you some examples. Okay, you might not believe this, but I've been sitting here and trying to improvise something um, for a really long time, embarrassingly long time, and I just can't shake off the feeling that the camera's watching, so I'm just gonna give you a few examples of licks that I came up with, but I kept improvising and I kept messing up and I couldn't shake the awareness of the camera, so I couldn't really get into it. Why, hello there, this is Tomorrow Me interrupting this lesson, and I woke up today thinking there's no way I'm releasing this lesson without a good demonstration. So after finishing my coffee, I took the guitar and improvised for half an hour straight. So I'm gonna show you, after we finish the lesson in less than a minute, I'm gonna show you one of the better examples that I half managed to improvise yesterday and then I'm gonna show you some good bits of what I did today with subtitles. I'm not gonna show you the whole half hour improvising of course um, and I will um, add subtitles explaining the thought process behind the improv so um, that would be helpful I think. So let's finish the lesson and then I'll play for you. So I did stuff like this. <laughs>
off some tendons like okay, uh, off of the A and B chords. Okay, just two and four, and also um, chromatic stuff like. Um, this just uh, riffing on the same uh, lick okay, something like okay, something like this um, just uh, creating um, chaotic licks with half the lick being the bass notes half the lick being the high notes okay, or having the bass notes interfere okay, uh, the wrong notes so um, I'll just admit that I'm not in the moment at the moment and you'll go improvise and do a better job than I just did using the tools that I gave you. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.